Hi, everybody. This is Brett Walter. I'm the president of the Homeschool Buyers Co-op, and I'd like to welcome you to our webinar today. In a moment, I'll turn the presentation over to Crystal Wagner, a co-op member and homeschool mom of two, author, speaker, and blogger. And hey, panelists, if you could mute until it's your turn, that would be great. Crystal is passionate about sharing her research and experience with still need somebody to mute. I think someone on the panel has got some rustling going on. So if you could, that, okay, that's good. Thank you. Crystal is passionate about sharing her research and experience with parents in a way that equips them to train the hearts, minds, and souls of their children. You can find out more about Crystal at www.triumphantlearning. That's how we found out about Crystal, actually, when she posted a, a review of Homeschool Planet on her blog. I'm going to put her domain her URL and send it out in the chat for you. And I just want to thank you, Crystal. We're very grateful to her, to you, for taking the time to 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 give all of us an introduction to Homeschool Planet. And when Crystal has concluded her demo, I'll bring Joe to Stefano into the conversation, and we'll start answering your questions. Joe is the co-op's chief technology officer and my partner in crime for many, many, many years, going back 30 years, I think. Uh, and he's also the principal architect of Homeschool Planet. So Joe knows absolutely everything there is to know about Homeschool Planet. And as a bonus, he can actually speak in complete sentences. So you'll be in good hands. Sorry, Joe, that was just kind of a joke about nerds, you know. Um, so with, with no further ado, I'm going to push a button and hand the mic over to Crystal. So Crystal, I just have to, I'm going to give you the, presentation. And what you need to do is push the button to let all of us see your screen. All right. Thank you, Brett. Is everybody seeing my screen here? Yeah, maybe. Oh, yep, yeah, yep, yep, yep. We're good. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Christina. Thank you, Cynthia. Appreciate that. Okay. All right. Go well, thank you, Brett. Let's get started. We have a lot to see tonight. One of the great benefits of Homeschool Planet is the ability to log in and get started without a lot of setup. There are a lot of options and features packed into Homeschool Planet that will allow you to customize it to fit your needs and your homeschool. We will not have time in this webinar to cover all of the great features, but I hope to show you how you can get started and the potential that is there. So you may notice whenever we first open Homeschool Planet, we're not prompted for a setup process. That's because you set up what you need when you need it. This makes the process of integrating Homeschool Planet into your planning routine simple. We can simply click on the calendar and start entering our course information right now. You can add all the other details as you go. My personal approach, though, is to set up some basic information first. You can take either approach, and you can make changes as you go. If you want to set up some basic information first, let me show you where that is. Up here on the menu bar, we see an option for settings. If I click on settings, brings us up to where we can enter school information, our emails. We can add our school year directly from here. We can modify our subjects. We also have places to enter grading information and track our class hours. And we can even share in calendars from other internet calendars, such as an Apple iCal or Google Calendar. And we'll get into a few of these items in a little bit, but I'm going to close this screen and show you that you can set up your family as you go, as you're entering course information, or if you want to go ahead and set them up initially, on the left side of your of your screen, you'll see a box that says My Family. If I click on that, it brings me up to where I can enter my family information. All I do is simply click on this Add button, and it brings up a new student. I can enter in whatever information for her that I want to enter. I can even upload a personal photo, which makes it a little easier as you're going through the day and working with Homeschool Planet to see your students' pictures instead of just 
our little green guy here. We can also track attendance and we can even set up logins for them. Right now though, I'd like to show you some examples with a pre-populated account. So we should be seeing our account that I have set up. Let me give you a little overview of what you're seeing. Across the top, we have a menu bar. And we have some options about reports, helpers, being able to print and adjust our settings, as well as where you can find help of how to do various tasks in Homeschool Planet. On the left-hand side, we have our family members panel. You can see that we have a family set up with mom, dad, four students. You can set this up however um, you need to have your family in there. You don't have to have dad, but it is an option. We have three ways that we can view our center panel here. One is viewing it by calendar. The other, if I click on planner, we can see a planner view. We also can see the resources view. So we can see all of the resources that we have entered associated with our courses. I'm going back to the calendar view here. And we see several options related to the calendar. We can quickly navigate to a different date if we click on the dates right here in this uh, left-hand side. Brings us up to options where we can choose dates quickly instead of scrolling week by week. If we click on today, it'll take us right back to today if we've been working maybe a month or two ahead working on some lesson planning. We also have options of viewing it by day, by week, or by month. On the right-hand side of our center panel, we can see Show Calendars 4. If I click on this down arrow, we have the option of viewing calendars for everybody, or we can view it just for one student or a couple of students. We also, in our More Options, if we were to click on this, we can see the shared in calendars that you may have shared in. There are two sections on the calendar middle part here. The top part is for activities and classes that do not have a scheduled time. They might be scheduled on a particular day, but not a particular time. On the bottom part, we see classes and activities that have been scheduled at a particular time. You can also see calendars that you've shared in. You may notice my meal planning calendar is up on the unscheduled part. I have that in my Apple iCal and I've shared it in with my calendar so I can see when I log in each morning what I need to be planning for dinner and it helps me to think through that and not forget it until right before. And then on the right hand side as well as down at the bottom we have various widgets that we can customize and use to enhance our experience on Homeschool Planet and we'll talk about those in just a little bit. Let me show you right now how easy it is to add a class. All we need to do is simply click on the calendar. You may notice my cursor's in the middle here. I'm just going to click on this anywhere in the calendar. And we have a pop-up box. We can add a class. We could add a birthday or holiday or anniversary. We can also add anything else such as a chore or if you have some various sporting activities, dance activities that you want to add in, you can do that right here. So I'm going to click on Class. And this brings us up to our Create Class box. I can click on the down arrow next to Subject. I'm going to enter a nature study class for this example, so I will choose Science. In the title, I can type in nature study. And you may notice down on the assignment section, it's blank right now because we've not chosen for whom this class will apply. If I click on my down arrow, I have options of all of the, the family members that we have set up. So I want this for all of the students. So if I click Abigail, Elizabeth, John, and Sam, and then I will close this drop down. You see now that we have assignments 
area that we can enter assignments for this class. This is the Shared Assignments tab. And in a minute, I'll show you, we can also add assignments just for one student. So let's schedule our class. Right on the second line, it says when we want the class. If I click on this drop down, you can choose every Tuesday. You have multiple options, so you can schedule this in a variety of ways to fit your needs. And I will click on this calendar next to until, and that will allow me to have the last day of class. So I'm scheduled now through the end of the school year. And at this time, I could change this if I wanted to have a different time, or I could also click the box next to no particular time. That would the class into the top part of our calendar window. Okay, I, Crystal, I, I want to mm -hmm. jump in here for a second because um, we didn't have this problem when we were practicing, but right now your voice quality, at least what I'm hearing, is kind of tinny and not kind of up to speed. Uh, I'm going to ask Joe, and Joe, do, are you hearing the same problem on your I side? Am. Yeah, I'm okay. hearing the same thing. And, I, and I'm sure other people are too. Um, so, Cynthia says robotish, which I, I concur with. So plan B, um, Crystal, which we, we, we did before, would be to have you um, switch over to your telephone. Um, okay, I can do that. Unless, unless you know, one of your kids is downloading a movie or something, because that would that would you know pull down a lot of your bandwidth. And if you know, if you could stop that kind of, and if anybody else in your family is using the, the your internet connection, that could be causing. Not that problems. I'm aware of. Okay. Nobody well, then, else let's, yeah. Okay. Well, then what we would need you to do is to dial in uh, from your landline. Yeah, that's right. And then you're going to have to switch your audio from mic and speakers to telephone. And hopefully that will work. Sorry, everybody. Ah, the joys of technology. You can't live with it, can't live without it. Hopefully we'll be back up and running. I, I found it kind of hard to pay attention to what Crystal was saying because of the the tinniness. She was, I, and just so you know, she was using the the mic and speakers feature, the what's called voice over IP. Uh, so that's her voice is being transmitted over the internet, as opposed to what we're going to do next and have her voice come in over the telephone line, which which usually is better. But when we tested this. Yesterday, in her case, the the voice over IP was better, so we decided to go with that. But usually, I okay. I'm in on telephone. Yay! Is this well, keep saying something else. Um, so I can continue on with our presentation if everybody can hear me. Okay. Well, I would say it's better, um, and. Cynthia said it's much better, so that's good confirmation. So I'm going to go on mute, and we'll okay. let you let you pick up uh, where you left off. All right. I'm sorry about that, everybody. So we are adding a class. We have entered our subject of science, our title of nature study. We have this assigned for all of our students, and we have it scheduled for our time of day. So now we can go add information for this class. Down in the assignment section, we see to every week add this. Let's add a nature walk. And if I were to click add, that will add that to every single week. We also have the option if we only want an assignment on a particular day, or if we want to just go into the, in the assignment day by day, if I click on this down arrow next to the more, to the right of the assignment, I can click add another assignment to this date. That will allow me to enter an assignment directly onto this date. 
And you can enter your assignments that way for the whole class if you prefer. You can also choose the More Options right here in the center. My mouse is circling it. If you want to use the Assignment Generator, that is a more advanced feature that allows you to enter a list of assignments in a variety of ways. If you want to have an assignment specifically for a student, I'm going to click on the tab for Elizabeth. And we can see that she has the shared assignments. The little icon here of multiple people shows us that that is a shared assignment. But I could also add an assignment just for Elizabeth. So let's say that I wanted to add a chord finding in Nature Journal. If I type that in the To Every Week Add This section and click on Add, that will add that assignment just to Elizabeth. I will click back on Shared Assignments now, and you can see Elizabeth's assignment is not here. If I click Save and Close, we see that the assignment, the class and the assignments have automatically populated onto our calendar. If I click on this class, we can see that Nature Walk is assigned to everybody. It says Show All. That brings up everybody assigned in this class. We also have the Learn About Enamels that's assigned to all. But we have the Record Findings in Nature Journal that is only assigned to Elizabeth. We have a number of options whenever we are ready to record our assignment. If I click on a class here, we see that we have an assignment scheduled to read about Milton Hershey for our biography. Right now, this box is white, and that indicates that assignment has not been started, not been worked on, not been completed. It's just there ready for our students to um, do that assignment. If we click on it once, the box turns green. That indicates that they have completed the assignment. If I click again, the box turns to a half yellow, half white. And that indicates that they have worked on the assignment but have not completed it yet. We also have the option, if you are keeping track of the time that you spend on assignments, you can record that information right here on the screen. It's right beneath the student names. I'm going to close this one here and pull up one for math. You can see we also, on the right-hand side of our assignment box, we could enter grades for their assignment. Now, sometimes you need to modify a class periodically throughout the year. All you need to do is click on the class, and we have the option to choose Edit. So I will click on Edit. And this brings us up to our assignment, our class window where we were entering assignments earlier. We have a number of options that you can modify your class. If you need to change the class schedule, you can choose Change Schedule. If you want to add additional assignments, you can do that by to every class add this or the more options. We also have a more drop-down box on the right-hand side of our screen. If I click on that, you'll see that you can add reminders to the assignment. You can add a website, upload a file, or assign other resources, such as a textbook, a DVD, a CD. You can also choose to remove this assignment or move this one assignment. If you have some specifics for this day that you need to change, you could add an additional assignment. You could also remove this date completely from the schedule. Or if you have multiple assignments, you could split the, the assignments here and shift the rest of them down. Sometimes you might need to shift your schedule out, and you can do that with the option under Other. We also sometimes might have where students work ahead in their class, and they complete several assignments in one day, and you want them to be able to continue working the next day on the next assignment so you can eliminate gaps in schedule, and that will take all of your gaps out 
and they will keep working forward. I'm going to close this window now. Uh, Crystal, I wanna, I, Crystal mm -hmm. if I may, I just want to jump in here for one second. Um, I, I should have told folks earlier when we were getting started that the Crystal's presentation, uh, you know, I, w when you when you all signed up, when you registered, um, you know, we asked you, you know, what was your level of experience with Homeschool Planet, and the majority of you were either not started yet or you were just into your trial. So we decided to devote the first part of the hour to an overview, like the one Crystal's giving right now. But we know that there were some people who are more, who are further along and have kind of more specific questions. So I'm, my plea to you is to be just be patient here a little bit because um, you know before too long, Crystal will finish the overview and we'll start taking questions. And that's for those of you who are kind of more advanced or have more specific questions. That'll be your opportunity to to get answers to those questions. And we'll we're totally prepared to roll up our sleeves and dig in and tackle a bunch of kind of meatier questions when the time comes. So Crystal, I'm sorry to interrupt your flow, but I realized that I had omitted to say that in the beginning and I wanted to let folks know that. So I'll turn it back to you. Sure, no problem. If I scroll all the way to the top of our screen here, we have on our menu bar helpers. If I click on the rescheduling helper, this brings up a help box where I can reschedule assignments. You will also be asked when you first log in to Homeschool Planet for the day if you have assignments that are overdue and have not been marked complete what you want to do. So if I click on the reschedule overdue assignments, this is the box that you will, you will see when you first come in for the day. If you choose to do nothing right now, you can always access this again as we just did through the helpers menu bar. You can choose to ha have helper ask you next time about these assignments and leave it as it is. You can choose to do nothing with these assignments and not to ask you about these particular assignments again. You could choose to mark them all as complete. Or you could carry them forward, leaving the rest of the schedule as it is, or shifting the schedule out one day. And if most of them need to be marked complete, you can mark the checkbox here under Mark All for Mark Complete, and then choose the single one that was not finished with a different option. So if I scroll down here and click on OK. And this is the class that I said move it forward. And it says that the next class is not um, schedule for today, so I can move it to either to today so she can work on this class or to move it to the next regularly scheduled class day. Now another way that I find the reschedule helper very useful is that I like to work off of a printed copy in our day-to-day -day homeschooling and I can go in at the end of the day and mark all of the assignments complete all at once instead of clicking through each individual one. So when I work off of a printed copy, let me show you where you can find that. Under the menu bar, we have reports. And if I click on assignment list, a box comes up and allows me to choose which type of report. Right now, you can see we're on the assignment list. We have several options for layout. My preference is by date, then by class, then by student. But you can work on um, figuring out which layout works best for you. You can also print this list out for an individual student by customizing down here on the bottom. We have a customize button and you could choose to maybe only show Elizabeth's assignments, print this out and give it to her. We have several options too for end of the year reports such as viewing class hours or class notes. If you have um, any note associated with a class, such as I keep a field trips report and a teacher training report, I can print that out and put it with my school notes for the year. We also have a grade report option. And you'll notice there is a second class note. It says class notes monthly. 
this is one that you can actually save. Once you have a report ready and it has the layout and the settings and everything that you want, you can choose to save it and it will be right there waiting for you. So when you're ready to print maybe assignment lists for the week, all you need to do is choose that particular report and you're ready to go. Now, now, I'm, so, I'm sorry, Crystal, but I need to jump in. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a report that you actually created and saved, right? That is a report I created and saved, yes. Yeah, so that's, if, if all of you are looking in your report menu, you're not seeing that, that's because that's not a standard report. That's a, Crystal took the class notes report, and then she customized it, and then she saved it with that name so that she could quickly get to that report whenever she wanted. Is it, am I right, Crystal? Correct. Okay, great. I'll shut up again. So I will close this window now and show you one other option you have for reports, and that is transcripts. So under the uh, menu bar reports, I will click on transcripts. And you can enter a transcript for all of your students that you have set up. We have one here set up for Abigail. If I click on the view edit, it pulls up the transcript for me. All of these blue edits text, if you click on these, you can actually go in and edit all of that information. So this is particularly helpful if you are moving into Homeschool Planet, you already have a high school student and they have some coursework that they have completed before you began using Homeschool Planet, you can simply click on the edit text and you can enter all of their course information, course name, grades, credits, GPA, everything, you can put in exactly how you need it. Or you can have Homeschool Planet create this transcript for you if you have been using it for their four years in high school. As you record their grade information, on grade 12 we see math, calculus, history, world history. These two classes are classes that Abigail is actually enrolled in right now on this Homeschool Planet um, account. And as we enter grades for her, her grade will be adjusted. When I open this transcript up, I will be asked if I want to update her information for her new grade. I'm going to close this down now. And I want to show you some other features about Homeschool Planet that can allow it to be a control panel for your life. As we talked about earlier, you can share in other internet calendars such as Apple iCal or Google Calendar. We also, on the right-hand side and on the bottom, have places for widgets. And this area is fully customizable. You can click and drag these widgets into whatever order you would like them. If you click on the down arrow within the widget, you have options of what you can see, including weather, to-dos, shopping lists, a daily Bible verse, a daily quotes, look up, and messages. As I scroll down the page here, you can see that I have a shopping list set up, and I have bananas, milk, and notebooks. For instance, if my husband were to call me and say, hey, I'm heading home, can I pick up anything for you? I can say, why, yes, you can. I need something from the grocery store. So I can go into Homeschool Planet, I can click on Dad, and you'll notice it says next to his name, text message. I've already entered his phone number in, so if I click on that, click Close, I can click Send, and it will actually send a message to him. We also have options for our to-do list. And you can have, you see I'm in the middle of the screen here. If I click on this down arrow, we have options for multiple to-do lists. So it automatically assigns a to-do list to every student, but you can add additional ones. Down on the bottom, I added Elizabeth's secondary reading, John's secondary reading, and Sam's secondary reading. So these are reading lists that you can maintain for your students so they know what books they need to be reading through throughout the year, or they could have their own individual to-do list that they can access whenever they log in to Homeschool Planet on their login. Another nice feature on the left, we have the lookup. So let's say that I did not get a meal plan for this evening and I need to find something quickly. If I click on the drop down and select recipes, 
I can type into the box, let's say I have corn, black beans, and tortillas on hand. If I click search, I am shown a number of recipes, and I can choose one that looks tasty, and if I click on it, it brings me up into a new window with the recipe right there. So I could choose to make that one for dinner tonight. Once you start using Homeschool Planet, you will probably find other ways that it can help simplify organizing and running your household as well. I have even incorporated aspects of my business calendar into Homeschool Planet. I hope that this tour has been helpful. And now, Joe and I would like to open it up and answer any of your questions. And if there were some more of those advanced questions, we can take those now as well. OK, Crystal, that was great. Thank you so much. Um, and as Crystal said, I mean, as, you, as most of you know, there's a lot more features there. But I think, the, as she said before, you can a lot of people just discover them as they go. But doing the basics is hopefully pretty straightforward for you. Now, I before while you guys are collecting your thoughts and sending us questions, I have a few questions that were submitted on the registration page. So um, I'll go down down those, and then we'll switch over to any questions that that you all type into that question uh, panel in your go to go to webinar panel. Okay, here come the questions. All right, so let me let me hit some of the ones that that some of you put on the registration page. So Kay asked commented, unable to use all features on iPad. Are there plans to be able to fully utilize Homeschool Planet on iPads? So Joe, I'm going to kick that to you. All right. Hello, everyone. Um, yes, there are plans to make Homeschool Planet uh, fully realized on the mobile devices like the iPad. Uh, we've been steadily increasing what you can do. We made it so you can see your calendar and then made it so you can check off uh, assignments is complete, and then we added the rescheduling helper and the grading on the iPad, and uh, and then you can now add uh, appointments and that sort of thing. Uh, so it's steadily increasing. Uh, the next couple of things we probably will put in is the ability to edit your lesson plans and uh, access to your widgets. Those are probably the next two big ones. But our we're we're going mobile, like you know, like everyone is. <laughs> The world is heading that way, and Homeschool Planet's going to go there too. Uh, Joe, you're you're going to kill me, uh, uh -oh. but this just came. <laughs> well, it just came up an hour ago. You know, somebody sent us a message and said, "Well, gee, we know you're doing this, but can, how about if we just had access to the <laughs> to the you know to the desktop version on this? This obviously applies to iPads. <laughs> he really is going to kill me, folks." <laughs> So, so this is something that Brett and I talked about maybe a half an hour before this started. And uh, there is a way to for us to provide the full desktop version on an iPad. It's you know, the text gets tiny and some of the things are difficult to use for touch, but it would give people at least an option to do some more things if they're adventurous that way. And uh, apparently now that it's been announced, I'll be uh, doing that soon. <laughs> And just to be clear about that, I mean, that will be a menu choice where you can switch from the mobile version to the desktop version. I, that will make no sense on a, on a smartphone. But for those of yeah, you who no, have... No. But on a tablet, yeah, but, it'll be nice. Yeah, but on a decent size, you know, the standard iPad tablet, for example, um, it'll actually, I think, be pretty functional. It will give, well, more than pretty functional, it'll give you all the functionality that you have. Yeah. Because some of it, some of it will be hard to get at with your fingers rather than a mouse. Yeah, because yeah. unless you have really small fingers, but and that's really the, the difference, you know, between the desktop version and the mobile version. The mobile version is really optimized to be kind of more touch sensitive, whereas the desktop version assumes you're using a mouse and a keyboard. So obviously, it's, it's much more powerful than the, the mobile devices. Okay, moving on. Um, Terry asks, we belong to a co-op that meets every Friday from mid-September through mid-December, then mid-January through end of April. In terms of scheduling class on, when, on Fridays when the co-op doesn't meet, I guess they meet on some Fridays and other Fridays they don't meet, what would be the most effective way of accommodating those co-op dates? I've already keyed in the dates on Fridays that the co-op meets, but I'm not sure how to schedule classes around them. Uh, Joe, does that make sense to you? 
Yeah, yeah, I think I know that question. A lot of people have that same issue. They sometimes they need to clear a day because they're not going to do their regular schedule because they've got, say, a co-op. Um, do I have the controls? Yes, oh, yeah, you Crystal. should. Okay, good. All right. So let's see. There's uh, there's the easy way and the more difficult way. The more difficult way would be uh, for people who have to keep track of the total number of days that they uh, teach. They have reporting requirements, so they can't remove school days, and they need that field trip day to count towards their school days, and they're using the school year calendar to keep track of. For those people, uh, what you do is you set up uh, your school year to have all the Fridays. You set up your classes to occur on all those Fridays, and then you'd go to the particular Fridays that were uh, field trips, like say Friday the 21st was going to be a field trip, you go there and go to each class in turn and you click on the class, you choose to delete that class, and then you choose the option just this day. And that would just remove it from that day for that class. And you do that for all the classes on that day. And then for each day that you have to go to the co-op. So that keeps that day a school day but removes the class from that day. Uh, the easier way, if you do not need to keep track of your total number of school days, is just go to your school year and vacations, and go to your school year, and just uncheck that Friday. You click on it, turns to an X, now it's not a school day. And if I were to save this, uh, Homeschool Planet would see if there were any assignments on that day and offer to move them, just like the rescheduling helper would. Okay, great. Um, Delena asks, how do I customize, then change it without rekeying the entire year or individually moving the lessons? I'm not sure I follow. Uh, most changes that you make in Homeschool Planet, if you remove days or add days or mark things as days off or someone marks someone as you know absent for the day, when you make the change, uh, when you try to save it, a Homeschool Planet looks to see if there are any assignments affected, and if so, we'll ask you what you want to do with them. Uh, carry them forward, or carry them forward and shift everything else out. Uh, okay. if, I, if you're on the line and, and I haven't answered your question, uh, please type a follow-up in the question box. Yeah, that would be for Delena. Um, Okay, let me see. Um, Shelley asks, can you use the add to every lesson option for more complex lesson plans? Like chapter 1, section 1.1, 1.2.1, etc., and titles. Yeah, sure. Um, if, you, if you edit a class and you're in the uh, everyday section, I'm sorry, I can't scroll from here because I don't have that control. Thank you very much. Uh, if you're in the everyday section, instead of just clicking add, you do more options, as we saw before. There are lots of different options. And the one you'd want is to follow a recurring pattern. Click that, and then next. Uh, you have options about when to do it, which days to include in the schedule. For now, I'm just going to skip this one to show you the, the meaty part. And it'll show you down here, this is the pattern that will be repeated over and over again. So if you had... Uh, say, chapter one, section one, and then you could do chapter one, section two, et cetera, et cetera. So whatever pattern of sections you need to follow there. Uh, if it's not a regular pattern of sections underneath, uh, I'm, I'm not sure how we could automatically generate it because you'd have to type them all in to tell us. But if it's a regular pattern like this, you had section one, two, three, four, you can add them in here, and then as you see in the preview, we'll uh, we'll number them and keep them along that way. Okay, great. Heather asks, how much time each week should I expect to spend in using Homeschool Planet to prepare my two kids for the week? Oh, I think this might be a good one for you, uh, Crystal. It's not really yes. a feature so, question. It's kind of a usage question. 
Right, and that, the answer really depends how much you have set up ahead of time. If you've set up either your whole year or your next term and the information is all in there, and that's how I approach it. I spend maybe, if I'm not making changes to the, cl to the classes themselves, I spend maybe five minutes a day actually uh, checking off that the assignments are completed or adding a note that we did a specific activity on one of the assignments, and then maybe another five minutes printing out the reports for the week, if, since we like to work off of a printed list as well. So you're probably spending maybe a total of 15 or 20 minutes a week doing maintenance on Homeschool Planet if you have all of your information already entered for the next uh, month or term or whatever time period that you're looking at. Okay. Um, I just, I just, uh, was that your, was that it, Crystal? Did I cut you off yeah. or was that? No, nope, that was all. Okay. Yeah, I just realized that I could, from these questions, that I could check the attendee list to see if the people who asked the question were actually here. Um, and Joel, Jill is here and Jill commented, I'm a paper user. How does Homeschool Planet help paper people? So, Crystal, that seems like another one for you. Right. And, Jill, let us know if we're not um, answering enough detail for you on that one. But I like to work off of paper also, but I really prefer planning electronically. And the reason that I like planning electronically is that, as Joe showed, we have a lot of options for the assignment generator. So I'm not rewriting everything every week, which would take me more time than if I just go into the assignment generator and have it fill out the information for the class following my pattern, and then go in once a week and print out our list. You can print the list for the whole week, or you could print it by day. However you're used to seeing it in your planner, there's probably an option of how you can view that on a paper printout for you to be able to work off of each week. Right. I guess another advantage is you get all your records are kept electronically and grades are figured automatically. You can't do that with paper, um, things like that. And you also have the option if you have a course entered for an older student, when a younger student comes up, if you want to use that course again, you can copy that course to the younger student, make whatever tweaks you need, and so you've saved yourself entering a lot of the information already. Okay. Um, thank you, Crystal. Uh, Rita, Joe, this is, I think, for you. Rita asks, how do I change the color bars to the left of the student's subjects? Do you know what she's referring to? Oh, she, uh, Rita says, I would like to make them all one color. I'm not exactly sure. If you um, student subjects, uh, uh, perhaps she means these colors here. Yeah. Uh, you can edit them right in this uh, while you're editing a class. If you want to change one, click the edit button, and you can change the text and the color. If you're going to change a lot of them, it's probably easiest if you go. Uh, could you scroll up, Crystal? Thank you. If you go up to the settings to subjects and categories, and then you can just click on the color and choose a new one. If you wanted them all to be yellow, you could just go down them and click them all. Yeah, I, I think, Rita, that, I think that's what, oh. <laughs> Rita, <laughs> well, Rita just commented that she had figured it out today earlier. That's what I, <laughs> that, that's what I get for not reading the thing here. Uh, let me see, maybe one more from the, let's see if Rose, no, Rosemary is not here, so she's not going to get her question answered. Um, uh, Madrid asked, can this be, can also a planet be used on multiple devices at the same time? I think that's the key phrase at the same time. Right. Uh, yes, you can use it on multiple devices at the same time. Uh, that's what many people do. Their children have their tablets or their phones to check things off and that sort of thing. Uh, it, it, um, there is a, a risk if two people are like editing the class, same class at the same time, then one of them might overwrite the changes that the other one is putting in. So I wouldn't do a lot of, you know, 
heavy editing of your schedule on two different machines. But if you are working on it on your computer and your children are using their tablets to check their schedule and check things off, then it's perfectly fine for that. Yeah, Joe, I, Crystal kind of passed. You know, my request actually did not dive into great detail in her thing. But if you could show, if you could go into the family profile mm -hmm. and just show people the kind Not of control. Yeah, sure. the kind of power that they have with the logins. So you can give each of your students here, when you're editing their profile from the Manage My Family page, you can give them the ability to log in, if you'd like. Uh, students who have their own email address that you've added will log in with their email address and the password that you give them here. If they don't have their own email address, they can still log in using your email address and a unique password that you give them here. And then for each student, you can control uh, what they are allowed to see and do. Uh, normally, they are allowed to only see their calendar. They can always check off their own assignments as complete, even if they view it. But they can't do any other editing, like changing the dates and adding and removing things, unless you let them. So you can let them edit their calendar, you can let them view their grades, assign their own grades, because some people have older students who are doing that, and uh, to record the time they spend on assignments and classes. You can also, okay. if you have, uh, like you give dad the ability to view on, on his, if he logged in, you could give him unlimited access by unchecking that. If you had a tutor who was helping you, you could give them access to other students' calendars as well, so they could see and edit those things. OK. Um, I'm going to start hitting the questions that have been typed in here during the, you know, during the presentation. So okay. um, which is awfully small type. Uh, it wasn't designed. This was this this panel was designed for like fourteen year olds or something. Um, okay, okay. Leslie asks, how can you add high school credits earned prior to high school to the transcript? Joe, that's for you. All right. Um, when you edit a transcript or create a transcript, uh, all of the data in here. It can be automatically entered by Homeschool Planet. And whether or not it's automatically entered, you can always edit it. So these were typed in rather than automatically entered. And they're down here. If you need to add more, you click Add Courses. And you can type in any course you like, give it any credits, grade, and GPA, and choose whether or not to have Homeschool Planet use it when calculating the averages and the cumulatives for the term and for the year. So you can mix and match your uh, manually entered ones and the automatically calculated ones from Homeschool Planet grades. And you can override something that Homeschool Planet has calculated if you need to for whatever reason. So you have That's pretty wonderful. much full control over your grad script. Yeah, and one, one thing I don't know the answer to, Joe, is can you add like grade 8? Or is this, uh, I mean, normally transcripts wouldn't have a grade 8, but. Uh, some people do make middle school transcripts if their children are going off to some special high school or uh, applying to a special program for high school. They need to make a middle school transcript, that sort of thing. And yes, uh, what the when you create a transcript, it uh, let's see, it bases the the years off of whatever grade you said the student was in, hmm. and the graduation date, and calculates it all out. So if your student were in grade 8 and you created a transcript, it would give you grades 7 and 8 if you chose a two-year transcript. But in, oh, okay. any case, in any case, those are also editable. So if this were, in fact, grade 8, I could just edit it and change it to grade 8 up here. OK, cool. All right. Um, OK, we, we, I think we got to Deanne's question. She was asking to, to show people how to auto-populate the lesson. The, I think she's talking about the assignment generator. Um, I would like to know. Jenny asks, I would like to know if there is a way to generate a report of all the grades given to a student in a particular class. Yes, uh, there is. 
that's using the customize button. So if I went to the grade report, I don't know if you have any grades entered in here. So here, it starts off in a summary view, just because that comes up faster. But then you can choose the layout and say details by student, then by class. And it'll list them all. There aren't many entered in this demonstration program. But if there were pages and pages of these, you could then customize it, choose which student you're looking for, which subject you're looking for, or if it's a specific class, you might have several history classes and you only want one, you can come down here and choose the class off the list. And uh, choose the school year or any particular date range you like. And you could list all of them or just the ones that you've given a grade to. It's, you can pretty much list anything you like out of here. And, uh, and if you do that repeatedly, if this is something you like to pull up frequently, um, as we mentioned before, let's uh, make one for Elizabeth. So if you do this repeatedly, you could save that as you know Elizabeth's grades or something. And then that will, if you created that, I don't want to mess up your demo data, Crystal, it would show up up here in the list, like the class notes monthly, there would be another one here called Elizabeth's Grades. And then you can get at it quickly. OK, good. Um, Natasha asks, how do you add Homeschool Planet to other calendars? So Crystal kind of, again, at my request, didn't, didn't dive in deep. But Crystal indicated that she brought in her, she keeps her, her meal plans in Apple iCal. And so she brought them into her homeschool planet calendar. We call that share in. I think Natasha is asking about, or Natasha, sorry, is asking about sharing out. So maybe you just give people a peek at that, Joe. Certainly, certainly. In the settings under the share panel here, there are two options, share in, which Crystal talked about, and then share out is the one you do to share it with another calendar. You say, share my calendar with others. And what it'll do is it will give you a link that if you paste that into your external calendar, so Google Calendar, for example, you can add by URL. And when you do that, you paste this link. You just copy and paste. You, know, you can use your browser's copy to copy it in. One copy link and then paste it into Google. And it'll appear. And if you could scroll down just a touch, Crystal. Thank you. And for every calendar that you share out, you get to choose what goes in it. So if you don't want, you know, you just want uh, Abigail's uh, schoolwork, you could get rid of all her non-schoolwork. I just get rid of these easily. It goes through faster. So you could eliminate all of the other things. And so now this link will be a calendar shared out with whatever uh, external calendar you want to use that has only this information in it. And you can make as many of those as you like. You can make as many share out calendars as you like? Yeah, uh, I, you can't see it because I can't scroll down. Could you scroll down a little further, please? There's add another shared calendar. So you could do one for each child. You could do you know, just the community service calendar that you're sharing out for the people that you're sharing with. Or whatever you need to do, you can mix and match and have uh, several of them. And Joe, when they're sharing out, you cannot edit what they're viewing in the other calendar, such as in the Google Calendar. You can just view it. Right, right. It's just like in, just in, as in any other external calendar when you're using those programs. They, they get a copy of the information that you can just look at. Um, OK. Um, Carrie asks, how do students check off assignments as they finish them? What if the assignments are not given a specific time? And then she says, parenthetically, I like to schedule what needs to be done daily, but not at specific times. Um, that's, that's fine. As uh, Crystal had mentioned, there's a section up here. Crystal has scheduled all her classes at specific times, but uh, it would be easy enough to start a class up here. I, I clicked up in the no particular time section, create a class. That will meet every weekday. Make an English class for Abigail. No particular time. You can give it any title you like. And if I 
put assignments in that class, and I save and close, then you can see uh, Abigail's class has shown up in the no particular time, and she can check it off. If you give her a, a login that shows only her activities, then when she'll see something that looks something like this, that's only the classes and assignments that are specific to her, and then she can just come in and click it off. Right. So I think the key point there is you, you need to have an assignment for her so that she can mark it as being completed. Right. And if yeah. you just do that, you know, day by day, you're making your assignments, then you would come in first and edit the English class. You'd go down here and type in whatever assignment or assignments you would like. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a little advanced user nugget while we're on the line. Um, you saw over on the More menu, you can enter add another assignment to this date. But if you hold down the control key on your keyboard and hit enter in an assignment, except I can't do that remotely through webinar. <laughs> if you hold down control enter on your keyboard, it automatically adds another assignment for you. So you don't have to keep going to the more menu. So you could okay, enter in sure. the four or five assignments that you had for her that day, say, and save it, and then when she logs in, she can see them. Oh, cool. I didn't know that. <laughs> All right. Um, is Monica, this might be for you, Crystal. Monica, because we were talking about meal planning, uh, is Monica asks, is Apple iCal an app? Is Apple iCal an app for meal planning? Uh, Actually, no, it's just it is a calendar. It's a general purpose calendar app. Um, and then she asks, do you share into Homeschool Planet after you fill in the meals on this app using an iPad? The Apple um, calendar is, is, I set up a new calendar that is labeled meal plan. And um, I shared that in. And I am putting in a brand new one right now on that calendar, and as soon as it updates, we should see it populate. I just update on my calendar, and then whatever is on that calendar is what gets shared into Homeschool Planet. Yeah, and I'm not sure Monica's asking this, but just in case somebody's wondering, the share in and share out is a one-time setup. So once you've set up yes. that link, once you've set up that link between the, out, the, the external calendar and Homeschool Planet, you just do that once. And then if you add something to that external calendar, it will automatically come into Homeschool Planet and vice versa. Now, it doesn't do it you know, live to the actual second. Joe, what, there's some kind of rules about how frequently these calendars update each other. Yeah, we have no control over how often a share out gets picked up. Apple and Google just come ask for new data at their will. Apple at least lets you specify how often you'd like it to happen. Google just randomly, two or three times during the day, he comes and asks for updated data. I, I can't figure out their schedule. Uh, as for uh, shared in, um, it'll we, we fetch them uh, every time you refresh your screen. And that's what I and, did. I and, just refreshed and the screen. Sometimes when you navigate back and forth, and sometimes when you edit things, we just occasionally go and make sure we're up to date. But certainly, every time you refresh the screen, we go and get the latest from your external calendar. So you can see this meal plan test is the one that I just added. So it's it's pretty real time. OK, great. Um, Christiana asks, Joe's for you, I think. Is there a way to upload photos of projects that my child has completed for a particular class? Uh, yeah, you can upload them as resources attached to the class or to the assignment. So if you uh, had this assignment here, you could say upload a file, PDF or doc. We should add photo. Then, I mean, we could add photo to that. We could add photo, yeah. Any, any sort of file you have on your computer, and then you can upload it. And uh, once you do, uh, then 
back in here. Underneath the assignment here, you'd get the information about it and a link where if you clicked on it, it would open it in a, in a new window. And, uh, and then that also would show up on your calendar. If you don't want to I'm attach not... it to a particular assignment, you can go to the Resources tab and attach it to the class itself. It'll just show up every day on the calendar if you want or not. But I'm not, I don't know that that's going to help Christiana because in that case, her photo would have to have a URL, right? No, no. Once you upload it, we provide the URL. There's a link to oh, yeah. our Duh. storage of the uploaded file. Do you want to upload a file, upload a picture right now? Sure, give it a shot. So if I click on the assign a resource and add a resource here, and on the resource type I have file from my computer, and I click on the upload. I'm going into my demo here, and let's just say I upload my picture and click Save. And then you can see the, the upload file link is right here. Why don't you save it, and we can see it on the calendar, oh. save and close. And then if you right click there. on it, yeah. then it brings it up there. Right, but go back and save it, and then we'll look at it on your calendar. You can see it right here. So click on that. Oh, there it is. So if that's a project, of, a picture of your kid's project, you could have it stored right here. You upload it to Homeschool Planet. Homeschool Planet will store it for you in your account and then give you a link to go to it whenever you want. And if, if we click on the down arrow here where we can choose Calendar, Planner, or Resources to view, we can see then that the uploaded file is saved right here. So you can view all of your uploaded files, your uploaded pictures. Right, OK. Um, now let's see. I'm going to just pause here for a moment. Uh, it is 6, well, it's 9.35 Eastern and 6.35 Pacific. We're five minutes past the scheduled end date. Um, lots of folks are still hanging in. Crystal and Joe, do you guys have some more time to take a few more questions? Yeah, sure. I'd be happy to. OK, great. Uh, OK, let's take some more. Um, Julie asks the question, is there an app for Android devices? Uh, there's not an app like go to the App Store and get an app, but uh, if you visit Homeschool Planner from Chrome on your Android device uh, and log in, you'll see the mobile version, uh, which you can use. And then there's an option on Android where you can save uh, the icon. You can save an icon for Homeschool Planet to your uh, home screen. And then next time, you can just click on that icon, and it'll take you right to Homeschool Planet. So, and we, I know we have instructions for doing that somewhere, Joe. Do you know where that is? Uh, off, I, uh, not off the top of my head. <laughs> OK, well, uh, Julie, if you want, just send a message to uh, you know, our support people can, can tell you, you know, how to do that. So for all practical, I mean, the app is kind of, the word app is kind of a technical term. And when some people say that, they mean, you know, something that they they got from either the Apple iStore or the Android store. But but what, and, and that we do not have for Homeschool Planet. But what we do have, as Joe said, are you can have an icon appear on your tablet, your smartphone screen, and that will take you right into Homeschool Planet, into the mobile version of Homeschool Planet. Um, and then you can do, you know, as Joe, Joe indicated earlier, a whole bunch of things, you know, right there on your on your mobile device. All right, Leslie asks, Joe, is there an online tutorial for new users once they've signed up for Homeschool Planet? Yeah, the first thing you see actually when you visit Homeschool Planet is if we launch, launch a little intro video. But uh, if you missed it or you want to see it again, you can uh, use the uh, help link here and go to the online help. And on the right here, you'll see tutorials. And there are some video tutorials. For uh, There's some overviews in here. There's some specific things about grading and resources and attendance that uh, you might find helpful. OK. And we're Joe's, Joe's the author of these tutorials. We're thinking of trying to make Joe into a YouTube celebrity here with Homeschool Planet videos. That's, that's my wish. Um, but we do, you know, he we need does, that you know, to them, though. Yeah, 
but what in between yeah in between uh, working on new features Joe occasionally polishes off a new a new video and and for major new features we our policy now is really to to do a video for the major you know for any new major new feature um, okay Juliet says my classes are scheduled Monday to Thursday if for example the Monday is a holiday and I want to move lessons for that week to Tuesday to Friday is there an easy way to do this and I do not have she adds I do not have Friday in the original days that the class is scheduled for uh, yeah for any one particular week that's uh, fairly easy so I'm going to take this class that I added and uh, change the schedule the first thing I'm going to do is change the schedule in other ways to remove Fridays so instead of every weekday change it to selected days of the week and say that it does not happen on Fridays save that no I want to make it from the beginning of the class thank you save and close so here I have a class that now does not occur on Fridays so I have Monday through Thursday and this Monday we're not going to have class for whatever reason it's a holiday or something happens so this class isn't going to be here but I want to have it on this Friday so I can edit the class I double click on the class to edit it you can also single click and then select the edit link like Crystal is doing Double click. Uh, and Gosh, Joe, I didn't even know that. Why don't you tell really? anybody about it? You need to tell people about stuff like this when you do it. <laughs> I learned Sorry. a new one, too. <laughs> control enter, double click. Oh, my God. I've asked you for control S, right? Have you done control S? Uh, no. I have not done control S yet. I will, though. But uh, I chose here change schedule. And then there's add or remove individual dates. And I can do that brings up a little calendar showing me how, you know outlined all the class dates I do have class and then if I wanted to add one to Friday I just click on it mark it in green to show me that I've added one okay and now I get a Friday entry where I can put an assignment or move my assignments to and when I save it it shows up on Friday there okay cool um, Oh, okay. this is a good question from Lori. Asks, print assignments are a very, very small font. Can I change the font? Printed assignments. Um, you can change the font for what you see on the screen, and then that'll carry over to the um, to the report to the printout. Yeah, to the printout. Okay, so yeah, show, let's yeah. show. So if you go to the settings and down in display you have several options for the font so if I made it the large font and I can't save it could you scroll down for me crystal <laughs> thank you and then things are quite large and uh, let's go to the planner so we can see the assignments so now if I if I print this out I'll see it in this much larger font and if you want you can change it back for your regular screen uh, one of the requested features that is uh, on our list we keep a list anybody requests anything through our support line uh, we put it on a list and with their name and email address and uh, every time we get ready to start a new batch of features we go down through that list and decide which ones we're going to work on for the next update which is usually updates are a month or two unless it's a really big feature in which case it might be a few months and uh, and so we put it on that list and on that list is uh, even more control about over your printouts and uh, that would be one of the things we'd add there to make it a little bit easier but uh, but for now you can change the, the font here print it and then change the font back if you'd like okay and Rita asks, do you have to check off each completed assignment? What happens if you don't? 
Uh, well, anything you don't check off will show up in the morning. The next day, the rescheduling helper will show up and will show you a list like this with your assignments. And you can either tell it to mark them complete, if that's what you'd like to do, or you can say, I really don't want to mark them complete or move them or anything. Just let them be in the past, and I don't want to touch them. And if you never, ever want to mark anything complete or have it ever automatically carried forward, then the first time you see this uh, reschedule assignments, or the next time you see it, click you know, do nothing. And then, Crystal, if you could scroll down um, a little bit out, out here so I can see the bottom of the dialog, uh, then there will be a checkbox that comes up that says, always do this. Always, I chose ignore the overdue items. Always ignore them and stop showing me this helper. And then every morning, Homeschool Planet will just silently do that for you. Also, when you're okay. viewing the calendar, if you have something that is overdue, it will show up as red. Yeah. So this yeah. is a date in the past, and so you'll see that it's showing up as red, so it'll kind of catch your eye. OK. Um, all right, so Leanne asks, does it make, this is an interesting question, does it make sense, given, I mean, she, she, she used to ask this in the context of our description of the share in and share out feature. Mm -hmm. um, she asks, does it make sense then to continue using iCal and share in, or should I, or could I just use my planet calendar so that I'm only looking at one calendar? Um, Really, it's up to you. I mean, you can you can do everything you want for a calendar on Homeschool Planet. Um, some other apps on your iPad, um, if the, you ask them to add this to my calendar, will add it to iCal. They won't they won't know about Homeschool Planet. So um, you you might want to make Homeschool Planet your main calendar, and then share in your iCal calendar. So if any of those apps do that, it still shows up at Homeschool Planet. But if you don't have apps that do that sort of thing, then yeah, by all means, you could use Homeschool Planet as your one and only calendar yeah. and not mess with the sharing in and the sharing out. Um, Carrie asked a good question. Does the external calendar need to be on the same computer? I usually update my calendar on my iPad, but would use Homeschool Planet primarily on my laptop. No, they don't have to be on the same computer. It's it's all yeah. in the cloud somewhere. It's They're all in the Apple cloud. iCal. Who knows where Apple iCal is? It's, it's somewhere in Cupertino. I think, or, I think it's in Eastern Oregon. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> Pendleton. Pendleton, Oregon. Great place. Um, OK, I think we talked about how you can set up Homeschool Planet to be used on your iPad. Okay, Natasha. Natasha had a follow-up question. This, had, this her, her earlier question was about the photo, you know, like the project photo. She says, "But can the picture be on the actual day the assignment was done, not under resources?" Uh, on the calendar, uh, it would be. I mean, if you had attached it to this assignment, it would show up right here on the calendar, just like this one shows up over here, it would show up right underneath it. I, so I, I think my guess is that Natasha is like, she wants that, but she doesn't want it cluttering up her resources page. Oh, uh, that's, I mean, when, when you added it, there was an option. Let's uh, edit this. There's an option down here where you can archive resources, which keeps them in your account, but doesn't put them on the resource page anymore. There's yeah, also really. an option on the um, class itself if you want to view the resource or not. Right. You can also choose to have it attached to the class but not visible on the calendar, which I guess is the the, the other side of what uh, the question was. <laughs> so you can do either way. Where, where's, where's that, Joe? Uh, I will show you, uh, except I can't scroll up. Thank you. 
when you edit the class, Whenever you add a resource, there's an option that says display this resource on the calendar and then the dates you want to see it. Oh, that's very really cool. And you can just take that off. It's just something you want to keep track of with the class but not have the link showing up in your calendar. Just an easy way to get at some information without making your calendar messy. Okay. Um... Okay, Diana asked a meaty question here. After my children graduate, how can I save this data, though I may no longer need to subscribe to Homeschool Planet? The data would be a wonderful record to keep. Uh, well, right now, the way you would do that is you would have to print out the, your records using the reports or the calendar printing and save a paper copy. But uh, one of the upcoming features, uh, if you go to our help site, I'll go to the change log here. So we, we have a list, the change log of the features we've done, and a list of upcoming features. So that shows you what we're working on now. And uh, one of the things is an export feature that will let you get uh, at least a, a comma-separated digital copy of your records to save on your computer. Okay. Um, okay. Um, Robin asks, "How where does the student log in?" Uh, they can just go to homeschoolplanner.com. Do you want to? Uh, I'll, I'll log out here. Is that all right, Crystal? Crystal, I think you're muted. Yes. All right. Sure. Okay. So if they just uh, go directly to homeschoolplanner.com. Uh, you don't even have to type this other part. We'll put the slash planner slash login in. You just type in homeschool-planner.com, hit enter, it shows up here. They can type in their email address and then the password you gave them and log in. Now, I'm not sure about this next question, but Heather asks, I was wondering about scheduling weekly work, i.e. work that needs to be done sometime during the week. That would just be yeah. something you schedule for a month. Do you know what? Is that? I, yeah, I know, what, I know what you mean. Uh, uh, several people have asked for something like that where they don't want to schedule it for a particular day. They just say, this week, finish this thing and, and put that in. What we usually ah. recommend is having uh, a class, so to speak, scheduled for every day and then put the weekly work on Monday and they can work on it and if they don't work on it the rescheduling helper will the next day say would you like to move this forward and you can just move it forward and then it'll carry to Tuesday and it'll carry to Wednesday uh, so that's one possibility another possibility some people don't like that because you know the if their students might get you know distracted or overwhelmed by a list of things showing up all on Monday uh, if you don't like that option, the other thing is to put them on Friday and let your student know that those things have to be done sometime during the week and they can always check them off in advance when they finish them. Okay. Um, okay. Tough question here from Debbie. Debbie's not going to pull any punches on us. If I need to make major changes to our schedule, how can I delete future classes to start fresh? Uh, there's no easy way to delete like everything with a one one click or anything, but if you know that if you've been say running this English class for Abigail for a while, but now you're going to make major changes, and you want everything you did already but nothing in the future, well then you could find the first day that has to go away, click on it once. I think I'm going to drag that. I'll click again. Choose delete. And then one of the options you have is every day going forward. And if you click that, it'll delete from that day going forward all of the classes. All of that class will be removed from the calendar. And you do that for each of your classes that you wanted to remove. So couldn't Joe, couldn't, couldn't she go to the very first scheduled class and, and then delete it from that day forward? If she wanted to delete 
the entire thing from the beginning of the class, not just from today onward or from some point in the future onward. If she really wanted to go into the, the history of her class back into the past and delete them, uh, that's also available from here. When you say delete, you can just delete okay. every day. So she can All delete away. any. She can delete any class from the very beginning, which would wipe out the entire class, or she could delete it from any particular day going forward. That is correct. Okay. Well, that kind of covers the bases, I think. Uh, if you disagree, Debbie, let us know. Um, okay. Kimberly asks. Do you have to have an assignment on a class in order for a student to check a class off under their own login, i.e. to have a you know, checkbox? So can they just check off a class, or does there need to be an assignment added to that particular day? There needs to be an assignment added to that particular day. But if you have a class where all you want is a checkbox, uh, what we recommend doing is editing the class. Oh, where did I go? If you look at the math drill, that's how that yeah. one's set up. Right, so math drill. Uh, uh, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with one that has nothing in it yet. So let's go here to oh, Brad, click on your picture. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't mean drat about you, Crystal. He <laughs> meant, you meant drat. He, he clicked the wrong thing. I'm having trouble with the whole webinar. It's slowly following my pointer. All right, so I'm gonna edit this class. And I will remove this assignment so it'll look like. So you have a class with no assignments, and you just want them to check off that they did it each day. Uh, what we recommend is doing something like this, just done as your assignment, and then adding it to every day. And then the class will show up and say done each time. Why did it skip over Sunday? I don't know why it skipped Friday. You added earlier one of the questions. Was it yeah, about it adding days? And so the schedule is set for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday right now. You had oh, added yeah. that one particular day. Oh, right. Oh, that's cool. That's, I'll have to work that's on that. When, yeah, you, when, you type, oversight. when you type in done here, what it actually does is pretends you clicked more options. I want to repeat the same assignment. And then on this next page, it pre-fills the dates of your, dates of your class. So it did not have right. Friday. Yeah, Friday. so it didn't bring in that kind of one-off one that you added. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll have to, That's uh, interesting. Track. More work. Yeah. <laughs> More work for Joe. Uh, but anyway, th this is what we recommend. You, you, you put just a simple everyday add just the word done or complete or whatever, and then That'll show up on your calendar. And you say done, done, done. Now, thanks a lot, Kimberly. You just gave Joe another project to do. <laughs> but you it's know, I might to, add. It's always good to find I've them. Had, I like to find them. If you find those instances as you're working through adding assignments or editing things, and something just doesn't look quite right, email the support help. They've been really responsive whenever I've had situations of, well, why did this happen? And either they tell me it's because we designed it that way, or it's, oh, well, no, it really shouldn't be. Let us look into it. So they've been really responsive. OK. Um, Christiana asks, if I want to keep a reading list, should I create a new subject, or is there another place for this? Joe. I actually right. have done that. OK. Oh, OK. Yeah. Well, then, make, Crystal, you answer them. <laughs> I actually emailed back and forth with Joe when I was first setting this up, trying to figure out how to handle a reading list. The issue I had, if you see on the widget, we can do a to-do. And we can have that set up with a, a reading list. Um, the issue that I had, if I, you can add the books here, and they can, students can check them off as they read them, but they fall off of the to-do list the next day. They don't stay there. So if the purpose is just that you have a list and you want your student to check those books off as they're reading them and not continue to see them, that is a great way to do it. If you want to continue to see them, I actually set up a class 
you can see here this one's called English Secondary Reading. And so what I can do, it doesn't matter to me what they're reading off of their list. So they just can click the checkbox that's next to done for the secondary reading. But I can go in on um, the individual students and I can add a resource right here, the assign a resource for Abigail, and I can actually add in the books that she reads. So the way I have it set up for my students, and this is just a matter of training them, is they add their books to the to-do list after they've read them, and then when I add them to the class, I can check them off. So there's a couple of different ways that you can do it depending on what your ultimate goal is. Joe, what's your answer? Oh, uh, those are, that's very good answers. <laughs> better than mine, uh, and the, but I also had uh, was going to mention that the list I mentioned of features that we want to add, reading list comes up a lot. So uh, that's pretty high on our list of desired improvements, uh, something that sort of formalizes all that so you can keep the list and without it going away and automatically add it to your classes and assignments and, and that sort of thing. But that, right. that's in a future enhancement. Yeah. So Crystal gave you a workaround, and <clears throat> Joe indicated that this will be a, we'll do something more elegant uh, for the future. <clears throat> okay, Leanne asks, I'd like my kids' chores listed out so that <clears throat> instead of referring to their paper list, they can look on the computer. I know how to make a general chore tab, but wondered where I wonder where I write each task so that it shows up in the planner. I was late logging in, so if you answered already, would, would you be able will I be able to hear this from the beginning? But no, we didn't we didn't talk about chores. I know how to create a general chore tab, but wonder where where I write each task so that it shows up in the planner. Well, I guess that would be in the in the assignments then, right, Joe? Yeah, I think what I would do there is say in a morning chores task like this if you so here's get dressed if they had five or six things that they had to do each morning uh, could you scroll up for me Crystal? I would do the more options uh, I think you could say I want to repeat the same assignment over a range of dates you say when you want to do it, and then how many you want to assign each day. So, if there are you know three things you have to do each day, then you could type them in here. You could add the three different chores. So, bed, feed the cat, and. the dishes. So, and could you scroll down again, please? You see it's previewed there. Yeah, previewed there. And then when you say OK. I can see make bed twice, because Crystal's already entered in make bed. But. Oh, did I copy that? All right. I, I can't click the OK button for some reason. Can you click it, Crystal? <laughs> Well, it looks like it's thinking at the moment. Oh, your internet is, oh, okay. There they are. Oh, tidy room, I guess, is what. Tidy room, yeah. So then you'd have them all there, and then on the calendar, you'd have uh, the check boxes for them. Okay, great. Um, Okay, Carrie says, I'm not quite sure, but maybe you can figure this out. She says, delete from calendar. Does the class remain in, ac in archives to be used again in the future? No, it does not. If you delete it, it's gone. But we are adding a class list feature, which uh, one of the next upcomings, which will give you a, a way to view all the classes you've had or will have and have scheduled. And one of the features in that will be the ability to look back at things you've deleted and either undelete them or create a new class from them. So at the moment, 
when they're gone, they're gone. But but we'll have the ability in an upcoming release next few months to do something like that. Okay. And anything uh, you delete now will be able to show up on that list. So so even if you delete it now, it won't be gone forever just until we finish this release. Oh, okay. So we're we're saving it in anticipation of having that future feature. That's correct. Okay. Heather says, and this, I think we kind of, can you have multiple, yeah, I'll just ask it, can I have more than one student logged in on a single computer in different tabs on Chrome, for example? No. Uh, Chrome, uh, you can't, let's say Chrome has a, another feature you can do that will let you do it, but different tabs in the same window all share the same uh, connection information. So if you're connected to our site, we can't tell that you're not that you've changed when you've changed tabs. It looks exactly the same to our site, so it have to be the same. But in Chrome, you can set up multiple accounts, so you can have uh, different. Um, you can. It's hard to describe, but in the Chrome settings on the right, one of the things you can do is you click on your name, and then you can. Uh, add another user. And so you can add different users and then you can open those in separate windows as different people and those don't share connection information. So you could log into Homeschool Planet in each of those separately. No, it, so it, I pulled up a Chrome window here and on, on the okay. top right you can see my name. If I click on that I can have different users. Right. So if you say switch person then you'll be able to add another person. Oh gosh, I didn't know that. Cool. Um, uh, Natasha, Natasha asked, is there a tutorial under help that goes deeper in detail about in-out calendars? It's still foggy, but would like to try and tackle it on another day. You have uh, a video yeah, there on are that, though. Yeah, we have a video yeah. on sharing in and sharing out. Okay. Uh, it gives the details for uh, Google and uh, sharing out to Apple iCal. If you're sharing out to something else, I don't, I don't know what the the details of theirs would be, but all of the stuff you do in Homeschool Planet would be the same. That video would be fine. Okay. And Kimberly is apologizing to you, Joe, for having given you another project. <laughs> Thank you, Kimberly. <laughs> I'm I'm really anytime you find anything, I really want to see it. It does not make me unhappy. I, really okay. would like to know of anything that is odd. So I can pick it. And Christiana has kind of follow up on her reading record. She says, I just want to keep a record of what they read. Okay, then I think either of Crystal's, yeah, the Crystal's suggestion. Yeah, just put it in to-do list and, do in and don't, don't, don't check them. Don't ever check it, it off, yeah. And then you'll have a record, right. But um, I don't, and you can print the to-do list, right? Yep. Yeah, so you could, um, you can see the widget down here. You could print the list. So if you didn't check them off, you could print that at the end of the year to keep that as part of your record. Oh yeah, that's right. All these, most of these widgets have print features. You can also okay. add it as a note to the class. There's, there's lots of places you could put it. If you're just trying to keep track of it. Right. Jeanette has a good one here, Joe. It's I signed in late as well, so I apologize if you cover this. If I have an English class with separate components of grammar, spelling, writing, etc., is there an easy way to set them up as separate assignments for each day so that I can grade them separately? Hmm. I'm not sure I'm following. Uh, if you want to manage them separately, so you have like all your grammar assignments in one place and all your uh, other assignments, spelling assignments. Uh, what you can do is you can have multiple English classes. So, uh, yeah, you don't have to have just one English class. You can create as many classes as you want. So, if this English class for Abigail, we call this spelling grammar. Grammar. And we'll do another one, and I'll create a new one here. Also, an English class. For spelling, uh, 
then I could put all the grammar assignments in this one, all the spelling assignments in this one, and then when it came time to grade them or mark them complete or manage them, you could do them separately. And uh, if you if it's all one grade, but separate parts to the grade, then you can uh, when you set up grading. There's an option here called grouping, where you can group classes together that are graded. So you can have uh, all of them grouped together to form one final grade that you would put on a transcript or something like that. Did you know about this, Crystal? Yes, you know but I don't use it because we don't keep grading in that sense. Yeah, okay. And then I suppose the other thing is you can just have one English class but set up separate assignments for grammar, spelling, and writing. Right, you could do that. Uh, even if you weren't tracking grading, you could set up grading as if you had it so that you could use categories. I'll show you what I mean by that. So uh, you could add categories. You could have a category for Grammar. It never knows when I press the caps key. It must be the webinar thing. Oh, I was thinking you you were like not capitalizing because of your programming ta habits. Yeah, no, no. I, I'm capitalizing. It's just like I can't scroll and I can't control click and so there's a bunch of stuff that the webinar is not supporting. So I could add grammar and spelling, include them just with arbitrary weights if I'm not really worrying about the, the grading. I'm going to say this for now. Could you scroll down so I can get the OK button? Thank you. And scroll back up. And then you can enter different assignments and choose whether it is a grammar assignment or a spelling assignment. And then if you wanted to look at only the grammar assignments, you could use the filters up here and change the category to, oh, this didn't update. Why did it not refresh? Well, there's another thing for me to fix. I'll have to save this and come back for that to update. Um, then I can the, say um, I only want to see the grammar assignments. And it'll Show me just the grammar. Right. So um, I'm uh, Natasha asked if there'll be more sessions in the future, and uh, we don't have definite plans for that. But uh, we have been kind of kicking around the idea of having uh, um, kind of an advanced uh, user webinar. But you know, guys, Crystal and Joe, I'm just kind of thinking that you know, just maybe just a section for session for Q&A, um, you know, not necessarily targeted towards any particular level of expertise, but we just take the questions, you know, and deal with them as they come in. Because I think even, you know, people who are new to Homeschool Planet, they're maybe getting a little overwhelmed by some of these advanced features, but they're at least seeing that, that it's there, you know, and they know that it, they can do it if they need it. And for people who are more advanced, they, they're going to, they're going to polish up their knowledge. Um, Plus, we can so, have Joe's top five, did you know these are their features? Another no note from Natasha, I guess this is kind of a comment, which I'll share with everybody. She says, grouping is great, uh, but difficult at first. Joe was a huge help when I asked the same question about grading. But once you set it up, it's wonderful, all caps. Joe, maybe you and I should go back and take a look at the grouping user interface and see yeah, yeah. It could if be we made can. Easier. Yeah, I was looking at that going, oh my gosh, that's kind of very, very advanced. You know, most people never use it. But as Natasha points out, it's a really, it's extremely handy feature. And Jeanette, thank you for this comment. She said, thank you for the options. I'm really enjoying Homeschool Plan. appreciate this webinar. Uh, will we have access to recording at a later time? Yes, you will. Um, that's kind of what I've got to do. I, by this time tomorrow, Jeanette, I should have it published. And I put it in the chat before. So actually, if you open your chat window, you'll be able to scroll up and see the URL 
to the webinar archive. And one last question, and then we're going to call it a night, folks. Uh, Carrie asks, resources for class. We use multi-grade history studies, and we'll cycle around at least one more time. Is there a way to create a series of resource lists by grade range? example, primary, elementary, middle, high school, and then assign the appropriate resource list to each student as needed. Hmm. I, I, I can certainly say no, we don't have that. Uh, I'm not exactly sure I understand what you're asking for, but... We use um, series of resource lists by grade range uh, and then assign the appropriate resource list to each. So I think she means like, you know, right now there's just one resource page. I think she's mm -hmm. saying, could we have a resource page just for grade 7 and a resource page for grade 8? And so then when she's assigning resources to a 7th grade student, she would just see the resources for that 7th grade student and not the resources for the 8th grade students. Uh, that could be what she means. Um, who was it that asked the question? Uh, Carrie. Carrie. Yeah. Uh, Carrie, if you would, uh, if you could go to our uh, support page and put in a support question with uh, your question and some, perhaps some more details, uh, definitely like to know what you're asking for in particular and add it to our, our list. I wonder if what she's meaning is, for instance, we cycle through our history twice. And so the first time that we cover, let's say, colonial history, I have a set of books that we read. And so my older student read those already. So the next time we cycle through that, my younger student will read through the same set of books. So if I could add in the resources for colonial for the young for a particular age range, and the next time that student comes through that age range, I could assign the same set of book. I see. Um, it would be like a grouping. Right, right. Uh, I think that uh, sounds like something that uh, the next feature we're working on actually might address. We're going to give you the ability to create standalone lesson plans that aren't attached to a class, and you can make a very small one that had the series of books and the resources assigned to it for, say, colonial history, and save that. And then when you're editing a class, say, I want to apply this lesson plan to this class starting on this date, and then those readings could be added to the class. So that yeah, Karen, not, she it's can, not exactly what she said, but I think it was... Well, she just, she just had a follow-up comment. She, she, Carrie just had a follow-up. Yes, I think you have it. My oh. now first grader will be in middle school next time around. Will do. Smiley face, thanks. Cool. Cool. And uh, Kelly has asked for more webinars. So I think that's good feedback. appreciate that. I kind of like the Q&A format. I just think that's uh, um, kind of fun. Um, and then I'm going to give, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, in a moment here, I'm going to give the last word to Deanne, uh, but I, before I do that, I want to, again, thank you, Crystal and Joe, both of you, for, Joe, for the wonderful job you've done with Homeschool Planet, and Crystal for being such a star presenter and, and making the time, you know, to, to, to share this information with everybody. I, I think having somebody on the panel who really uses it you know, to manage your life and as a control panel for life is 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 very helpful to folks. So, final words here. Lots of thanks coming in right now, but final words for um, from Deanne. She says, "I just want to say, Joe is fabulous at helping when I've had issues. Homeschool Planet has been a huge capitalized blessing to our family. Thank you so much for creating this. Well, thank you, Deanne. Well, thank thank you. all of you for showing up, and uh, we hope we were helpful." And happy planeteering, I guess. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> whatever it is. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Okay, thank you everybody. I'm gonna thank say you. goodbye now.